Okay. So everything seems to work. So hello, my name is Jakub Dupak and I'm currently the main developer of this simulator. So QTRV sim is a computer system simulator designed especially, but not only for undergraduate computer architecture courses. It is successor to previous simulator QT MIPS that was simulated, simulating the MIPS architecture. And it is currently used by our Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Faculty of Computer Science. It, also, it is also used by Technical University in Graz, University of Colorado at Colorado Springs, and uh, University of Porto. Our previous MIPS edition is still in use uh, by the university in Athens and uh, uh, Mathematical Faculty of Charles University in Prague. So first I will tell you how the simulator looks and what can it do for you. Then we will look a bit inside how it works and this is especially if you would be intended to extend the simulator. And then I will pass the speaker to my colleague, Dr. Pisha, who will show you some practical teaching and practical demonstrations with the simulator. So let's get started. This is the simulator. It comprises of flexible windows representing important parts of the simulated computer system. And each of the windows can be resized, rearranged, closed as needed. It can be tap or it can be a window. So let's take a closer look. This is the basic view. And okay. Here we have a detail of the program memory uh, with address of the instruction code as hexadecimal and a detail of the instruction disassembly uh, with color highlight corresponding to stage of the pipeline. And this gray area represents uh, the instructions currently in the program cache. Also because the simulator pretty much works as a debugger, uh, we can set breakpoints in this column, the first column. Up here, this panel shows the current values of the general purpose registers with color highlight of the recently read and written registers. And on the right here, we can see the same with control and status registers. And if we move down, we will see the heart of the simulator and it is the visualization of the pipeline. So let's zoom in. Uh, we can see all the control signals and data paths with their values that are animated as the simulation progresses through the pipeline. Uh, we can see the color boxes that correspond uh, to the program view, as I mentioned before. And all of the parts, including multiplexer and values there are animated as we go. But full pipeline is not always what we want. Uh, especially in the beginning, we want to show something simple. So we also provide a simple single cycle processor. But because we want to start with this simple processor and we want to move to the pipeline, uh, we have built the visualization in a way that all the parts uh, that are present both in the single cycle processor and in the pipeline processor are in the same place. And we only add the necessary components like interstage registers. So the simulator accepts ELF binaries, but because recompiling and re-uploading the file to the simulator might be a tedious task, uh, we have also included a simple uh, editor with basic syntax highlight and of course integrated assembler. So you can write and edit the code right in the simulator and just here you click to run the assembler, build it, and you can simulate you can make small changes, you can simulate again, and so on. And once you get to more complicated projects, you can also use this button on the right and uh, invoke external make file for complicated C projects. So if you want to start with a simulator, what we recommend is to go to the file part uh, examples and you can open some basic examples that we provided to show you what the simulator can do. It will open editor and you can start experimenting. So 
once we have basic programs running, we want to start examining their effects. And uh, besides control and uh, general purpose registers, the most important effects are in memory. So there's the cursor here. Uh, you can see this view of memory, which is editable. Uh, the size of the memory unit can be modified to be word, byte, half word, uh, and it will view it with the respect of the current NDNS of the processor, which can be modified, and it can view the memory directly or through cache. Speaking of cache, this yellow arrow you can see uh, shows the part of the uh, of the memory that is currently present in cache. And if we move here to the right part, uh, you can see details of the cache here with the statistics and down here, the whole uh, shape of the cache and data placement as the, animation, uh, as the simulation progresses. Of course, we can select practically arbitrary shape of the cache and examine the effects uh, on performance. So this is the comp uh, configuration of the simulator. We can start easy and we have four pre-configured microarchitectures with or without cache, uh, with or without a hazard unit, or we can configure all of the options ourselves and use the, sorry, use the custom option. Uh, for that, we have all the other tabs. So we can enable or disable pipeline or hazard unit and modify its behavior, set memory penalties uh, for statistics, uh, modify the shape of the cache. And finally, we can enable or modify the emulation of the operating system, including emulation of file system uh, that is connected to the host system. So when, once we are done with basic programs, we can start playing with more advanced stuff. And one of those options that we provide are memory map peripherals. Uh, we have to let the odds, three knobs with buttons, terminal based on interrupts and LCD display. And selection of those peripherals is not random. It is inspired by this real world board that we are using uh, in our courses. Uh, and the interesting part is that the same code, which I mean the source code, unfortunately the board is not RISC-V, so that would be nice, uh, can be used both in the simulator and on this real world board and you can switch uh, for them backward. So, so far I have shown you the graphical user interface, but we also have a command line interface. Uh, it can be useful for uh, quantitative analysis or automatic evaluation of homeworks. The nice part is that it is connected to the same core as the graphical part, the graphical user interface. So uh, if the student prepares the homework in the graphical simulator and submits it and it is evaluated using the command line interface, it is practically guaranteed to give the same results. So that's how the simulator looks and what can it do for you? So let's look inside. I will start with some details about instruction decoding, then execution, memory model, and finally the visualization. So to simplify extending of the simulator, we use a single recursive table for everything that is related to instruction. That is assembly, disassembly, syntax highlighting in the editor, and and the simulation itself. Uh, so each uh, table of the simulator is indexed by some portions of the instruction. And if we look at more concrete examples, uh, here we have a group of instructions that uh, point uh, to table load map. And the table is going to be indexed by uh, three bits at index uh, 12. And those are instruction to load, uh, all kinds of loads instructions. If we zoom into that, we can see that we have name type of the instruction, allo operation. Uh, this part is used if this is a group and not individual instruction. Then we have arguments for the assembler that are compatible with the uh, notation that is used in the GNU assembler. We have some masks to control that the instructions are valid. And finally, the most important part 
the values of the control signals of the simulation itself. Uh, if you look into execution, uh, it is comprised in very, very similar way uh, to hardware description language. Uh, we have a method for each state of the pipeline that is producing the value of interstage registers and it is passed through each step. Uh, all the stages are shared between the single cycle processor and pipeline processor and they are only you know, rearranged and simulated differently in time, but uh, the main part is shared. And if you look inside, this is a fetch. Uh, we get previous um, stage that here is uh, program counter. Uh, what we do is that uh, we get a uh, program counter value, we read the instructions, we control some special cases. And in the end, we write all the values to the interstage register. And also because some values should be visualized but are not part of, of the interstage register, uh, we also have uh, internal state that is outputted by the uh, pipeline stage. Now we can move to the memory model. Uh, even though the graphical interface currently exposes only a very small number of memory configuration. The model behind it is very flexible and the tree of the caches can be shaped pretty much arbitrarily. We have special port for data memory and program memory and memory management units like and TLB would be placed in this part. All of these which are called front end parts leads to memory bus and are then directed either to simulated RAM or to memory mapped file in the host operating system, which can be, for example, source file if we want to work with some bigger files. And those also the peripherals that are mapped. All of the components can be added or removed from the bus as the simula uh, simulation progresses, but that part is not currently used. And all parts of the memory model are designed to work well with any uh, memory NDNS, which I mean, little and big, not anything else, uh, even with unaligned reads and writes. So it can be very well extended. And final part, uh, the visualization. Uh, previously, this was done manually by writing QD objects, but that turned out to be very tedious. So the way uh, our current visualization, visualization works is that uh, this is an SVG file uh, that has special annotation uh, to connect each of the visualized component to the interstage register or internal state I have shown you before. And we can modify it in graphical editor and it automatically connects to the state of the CPU as it is simulated. So some frequently asked questions. Uh, is the simulator cycle accurate? Uh, yes, assuming that we wait for every uh, memory access to finish, we don't install stores, uh, stalls or anything. We just assume that the simulator is so slow that every memory operation finishes in time. Is the simulator compliant with RISC-V test? Yes, that is something we edit like months ago and currently it is automatically tested as the part of the CI with every new component. Uh, we support the RISC-V 32IM uh, or 32I uh, instruction set with uh, multiplication uh, extension in the graphical part and also 64-bit uh, base set in the command line part, but we haven't uh, they had figured out how to fit the 64-bit values into the visualization because there is not that much space uh, and to keep it like reasonable. And we also support instruction to modify the control state registers. We don't have memory map uh, value, uh, memory map virtual memory support yet, but uh, for the next semester and the following semester, one student already agreed uh, to start working on it. So it should be supported quite soon. 
And about our future plans, we would like to add compressed ESA support, but it is quite hard to visualize, so we will have to sort it out. Uh, we would also like to add uh, details about encoding of the instruction, which is special in the RISC V. Uh, we would like to run a minimal RISC V Linux ELF binary, which we are quite moving in that direction. Uh, we can already uh, compile and run uh, malloc and its test from the new lib. We would like to also add 64 bit for the visualization. We just need to figure out where to put it. As I mentioned, the memory memo management unit is already almost on its way. And final two things would be to add visualization of utilization of the pipeline and some limited ability to step back so that if, say, if the student misses some step, uh, they don't have to repeat the whole simulation and they can just look back. So the simulator is free and open source and it is developed on GitHub. We provide uh, binaries for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Uh, in GitHub releases, we also provide Ubuntu, SUSE, Fedora, Debian, uh, Arch, and Nix uh, packages. And uh, finally, we provide a experimental online version that runs in WebAssembly and you can just open it in browser and without installing anything, run the simulator. So most of the work was done as part of lectures or master's thesis. So if you would like to read something more about that, here are resources. And we also have a paper published on the Embedded World Conference. And we will be also at, the Fo at FOSDEM in a few weeks. And that is all for me. For, uh, for now, so if you have any questions. Okay, then I'll pass the speaker to Dr. Pisha and he will tell you some practical things about teaching and the simulator. Jakub for presenting the simulator. Okay, we have planned a little different audio setup. So I hope that you can hear us well and uh, Okay, please, can you confirm that you can hear? Yes, we do. Yeah, okay, great. And now the question is, uh, what you want to see now? Uh, I have prepared uh, some excerpt from our lectures, so uh, we can show you how we teach with the simulator, or we can try uh, online sessions that you can test it, and uh, we can provide some tutorial to test something uh, with, the, with the simulator online, or... Uh, we can speak what is the best way how to teach computer architectures because it is quite difficult task sometimes, at least with our students. So uh, it depends on you what is what is your idea, uh, what what you want to speak about now. So I can go quickly through our presentation. I think that everybody on this meeting knows how RISC V processor work and how to teach with it probably. Uh, or so I probably should not go or spend too much time on the details. It is correct, or or do you want to no, go? Feel free to feel free to use the time. Yeah, yes, I know, but the uh, question is uh, on the uh, on the attendees if they want, for example, they start the simulator here and uh, we try to do something together, or if you want to go. Okay, we can go quickly through our uh, main lectures. If you have interest, basically we have started, uh, we teach according Hennessy Patterson computer organization and design um, uh, hardware software interfacing uh, textbook. So it is the standard uh, in the area, I think. So it would be interesting to have some feedback how many people use this or if they there are others who use some alternative for the basic courses. In the past, we have started with uh, MIPSIT simulator with MIPS version of the book. Uh, but problem was that MIPSIT was uh, Windows only and even on Windows, it didn't work well. So at the end, it sometimes was, it was possible to use it on the Wine emulation on Linux, but uh, okay, it was a lot of troubles. So in the 2017, I started with one of my Diplomatis student to work on the 
MIPS emulator, which has been intended to replace uh, MIPSIT. And it is uh, this uh, diploma thesis by Karel Kochi. And uh, then uh, even that we want to follow risk five from the start, we know that we are not able basically to switch all the teaching materials, textbooks and so on. But then uh, we continue to with uh, Mr. Dupak and his colleague, Max Holman uh, on the switch to risk five. So we have some prototype in 2021 and in 2022 we started to teach with rowley finished simulator and uh, okay this what we use now so we have first run finished and uh, we have uh, uh, need to correct some bugs uh, during the uh, semester and so on but i think that at this moment it is quite stable and basically even with this prototype there was not so big problem there are alternatives for the computer architecture teaching so it is qt uh, spim it is uh, one option uh, mars uh, emulator for the maps edu map 64 uh, which has advantage that it has uh, uh, it is super scalar but for basicers we do not Needs a super scalar execution. There is very nice uh, uh, RAR simulator, uh, but again, it is a little too complex. So, uh, no, it is uh, RAR, which has, okay, it is in the Java and has a problem that uh, we, we initially think about possibility to add there the pipeline execution, but it seems as uh, uh, required to rewrite a whole simulator. So we decided that we start our oven simulator and uh, okay, in parallel, there has been started a uh, RIPIS uh, simulator, which uh, is quite advanced, but we didn't know about the author uh, when we started. So, okay, but we, we have tried to find the possibilities to cooperate, but it is more complex and oh, okay, it diverge. Basically, it is not so easy because our simulator focus on different uh, different areas. On the MIPS, we have even implemented uh, uh, control uh, coprocessor zero, so we can even demonstrate uh, interrupts. We are near to finish the interrupt. Uh, processing even on the QTR we seem. So it is our uh, okay, our idea to, to go to this direction. Okay, and uh, if we start our lectures then we start by basic main CPU cycle, then we try to uh, introduce students uh, how the C program is, uh, is uh, converted to the assembly I try to switch on the pen mouse pointer sign okay so we can we can show how it works and now we try to describe what is the problem to encode instruction and why we cannot have a infinite amount of registers and so on and what are compromise for the uh, number of uh, architecture registers and then later, maybe we speak even in advanced architectures course, how they are uh, remapped to the bigger amount of the physical registers and so on. Uh, then we introduce the risk five instruction encoding, uh, something about calling convention and what, uh, we follow the building the CPU almost according to the Hennessy Peterson book from the start when we show how to build a program counter and then define a, that small basic subset of instructions uh, which uh, allows to build a okay, Turing complete system or some computer and then we try to design the CPU from the components. And we, in uh, advanced architecture courses, we have even uh, built a CPU from those components from the uh, with use of the Verilog or GHDL uh, or 
uh, in this basic course, we only show them the simulator and then try to work with the simulator. So we start from load word instruction, uh, which is uh, okay, quite easy to understand because we need to read some uh, variable which is somewhere in the memory and we define what we need to do for that basically that we have program counter it selects some value from the instruction memory it is decode and in the case of risk cpus it is easy that basically some part of the uh, instruction is decode to select the register and uh, another one to uh, select immediate value those are added together and we get through the uh, random access memory and that the value and we can build a basic CPU which can process a single instruction load word. And now we want to add, okay, we need to step to the next instruction and we now want to modify our structure to allow even a, a store word instruction. So we need in this case to add the second uh, read of the register for the actual value which should be stored to the memory address is computed same way as for the load word and in this case we do not need the uh, read data path so uh, register write value of the control signal is set to zero and now we want to build the arithmetic logic instruction so basically we can bypass uh, the uh, memory and we have there already the immediate operand, so we can add those together and uh, get the result, or we can add uh, two values in the registers, add them together and write them back to the register file. And the uh, rest of the operation uh, is, uh, okay, is a different only that it controls arithmetic logic unit by a different uh, control signals to select a different operation. Uh, we, if we want to add the immediate operand, we already have there the hardware to compute the immediate offset for the load word. So basically we can switch it to this input and uh, we have uh, add immediate value operation. Uh, for the branch, we need to compute a different uh, address of the next instruction than for the sequential program execution. So we have there in the red those blocks which need to be added, and we add there uh, uh, output from the arithmetic logic unit. We consider for the basic instruction set only the branch on equal and branch on non equal instruction to make the design simple. So if there is a branch, we go this direction and we can compute if the condition is true, we can select a new address, uh, which is formed by the actual address of the instruction plus the immediate value. And when we finish with this single cycle CPU, we can show that it is extremely slow because uh, uh, the signal needs to propagate through whole combinatorial logic. So we can find that probably most uh, uh, most time is necessary for the read from the memory. So because we need to take this path, this path together here from the memory and read back with all those uh, set up at hold times and so on. So we know that uh, non-pipeline CPU cannot execute fast. So we try to add the pipelines basically divide the execution to the different stages. And as we add uh, interstage registers, then the execution, uh, then we can speed up the clock, but we get to the problems of the hazards. Okay, we need to even to delay the control signals between the uh, stages because each control signal needs to follow a data corresponding to its instruction uh, which pass through the pipeline. But we get there to the troubles when we have two instructions which has data dependency, which set some uh, output register. So in this case, if it is the input to the next instruction, then we have a data hazard. And one option is that we stall the instruction 
or the other option is that we add the forwarding. And we can uh, uh, great demonstrate this on our simulator because it is possible to switch off a hazard unit and we see that the results are incorrect. Or we can switch on a hazard unit with the stalling only. So in this case, there it is necessary to insert two stalls that this output value can be passed oh, as the as the input, it is uh, this a zero is the first input of this instruction. So it is this, this value. And because we declared that our register file is able to write the value to the register and read the value of that register in the same clock cycle. So there are two options. One is that it has internal bypassing, other that it is uh, triggered by the uh, falling edge of the clock signal, then we can need and can achieve the correct execution with those two stall cycles. And the simulator allows to, uh, to count the number of stall cycles in the code and so on. So students can try to reorganize code to play in the fact uh, uh, with uh, instruction scheduling like the compiler does and this way to uh, try to uh, tune the code. Or the other option is to add the forwarding. So in this case, we know that uh, this uh, output as zero is already available at the start of the data memory phase. And in this case, we can forward value on the input of arithmetic logic unit, which is used for the following instruction one clock later. So if we add the uh, logic to resolve the hazard, then we can resolve this problem by passing the value through this sear suite. So we add there in the red, those uh, sear suites which allow us to do a forwarding. We need to monitor the actual values of the write register in the memory and write rec phase and compare them to the values of the corresponding of the instruction which now passes to the arithmetic logic unit and we can resolve those hazards. And again, we can see the problem here and we can uh, we can see you see there is a zero which should be read by this instruction, but this one said this the actual value is available here, but from the register file we read incorrect value zero zero here. But uh, if we add, the, if we do the uh, forwarding one cycle later, then we can pass this 555 through the forward sear suite back to the input of the arithmetic logic unit. For sure, this works only for the single cycle arithmetic logic unit and so on. But it is uh, uh, equivalent to the description in the uh Hennessy Peterson book so it is I think a good uh, good tool to help students to understand the stuff and so on we can see here uh, how to resolve the hazards we have there that option th uh, in the simulator that we can access some registers uh, initially, we have built a board uh, for the demonstration and teaching computer architectures, which is based on the Xilinx Zinc uh, sock with ARM. Uh, and uh, we decide if we put there the uh, touch screen, but if you have courses uh, which are attended sometimes between 180, some years, even up to 400 students, then touch screen on the kit uh, is quite problematic. So we decide to use a DL knobs uh, with uh, incremental encoder, which allows you to set a three one byte values, so RGB in the fact. And you, you can read that value from some address. And if you store this value to another address, you can set RGB LED to the same color. So basically it is the first task, basically how to use a load war instruction. Basically you take the data from the memory or from the uh, 
a hardware register and store it to some another one. And you can see that the system can be connected with the external world. Then we have there uh, another peripheral, which allows to visualize 32 bit uh, written value by on the real board by the individual LED diodes. Uh, in the case of the simulator, there is uh, the uh, number written in binary hexadecimal and decimal. And we have there a very simple uh, serial port uh, peripheral which uh, is uh, modeled according to the UTS SPIM from the Hennessy Peterson book description from the MIPS one. So you can show how to uh, send the data to serial port, read data from serial port, and we have there even possibility to use the interrupt. On the MIPS version, we have even the interrupts already implemented on the CPU core. So you can show a full interrupt handling of the uh, of the serial port or some timer. On the RISC uh, version, we need to finish this part. We already have implemented uh, uh, control status registers instruction and the logic, but we need to implement the actual interrupt logic and so on. Okay, so this is a description of the serial port. So serial port has status register for the reception of the characters. Uh, it has two status bit. One informs if there is a character ready to read, which can be read from the following register. And uh, it has another bit which allows to enable the interrupt. Uh, for the write, you can check that the serial peripheral is ready to accept the byte. And then you can write a byte to the following register. Uh, then we can connect even the uh, LCD display, small LCD base display with 16 bits uh, per pixel, which is interesting for the students that basically they see that the RGB uh, true color, eight, uh, RGB uh, 8888 bit needs to be transformed to some different one with some logical shifts and so on to get the color on the small display 480 by 320. And it is directly mapped in this case to the uh, address space of the simulator. Okay, and then there is a small uh, simple example how to start to work with the simulator. So, uh, for example, we provide a students the task to try to tune the, uh, they have a limited number of the words in the cache. They can, in data cache, they can decide how to organize the cache because in simulator we can use a uh, least recently used random uh, 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 allocation, then we can use uh, different block size, uh, number of sets and so on. But we limit them at the start for this concrete task uh, for a given number of the words in the cache. And they, they can try to tune the algorithm together with cache parameters, which they provide uh, in the graphic interface, in the dialogue, and for the submission to the evaluation system by a simple uh, text file, where is the organization of the cache given by the policy, a number of set, a number of words in the block, number of ways, and a write method. So basically, you can say that it is write by cache, letter U, and okay, this is very small one, which has only a single single word in the single block. And uh, they are allowed to use only uh, 16 words in, at the maximum. And uh, this way they can try to tune the algorithm. And the uh, command line version of the simulator has even the advantage that it allows to uh, modify a memory at the, by the some okay, list of the words. Uh, during the start and uh, when it uh, reached the break instruction, it finished and stored the areas which are again described at the command line. So basically we can provide them with some unknown set of the 
input variables. Their task is to sort them in the array, and then we can read it from the evaluation system and check if the task has been fulfilled and how many clock cycles they need to finish the task. There is uh, the task uh, assignment, so it is possible to go to, to this. Okay, and there are links and resources. So our main page is this uh, computer architecture education at our university. We have joined the forces between more faculties to uh, design this page and to put there the link to the courses and so on. And there is already the available the online version of the simulator. Uh, this, there is description of the peripherals. Uh, and uh, if we speak about risk five, we cooperate, for example, with expressive systems. We have provided uh, them with some uh, drivers for uh, can. Uh, peripherals and so on. So we play even with the physical risk one chips together with the company. Uh, mostly we contribute to uh, Natix, but we contribute even to Linux kernel, to the QMU, to, uh, to RTMS and so on. And uh, our next uh, presentation, where is uh, possibility to meet in face is uh, FOSDEM. Uh, where we want to, okay, it should be a February 5 in Brussels. There is some list of some other, uh, other our uh, project tasks and, and results and so on. So, okay, I, I have tried to go very quickly because I think that most of you know all this stuff which I am speaking about, but we are trying to, Okay, to, to show you where we have got and what you can reuse from our uh, our project. You can find all those lectures in our courses. Uh, they are freely available. Uh, we have a lecture recording and so on. Uh, okay, at some quality, okay, so perfect. We want to enhance the course, enhance the slides and so on. Okay, so thank you for the attendance and uh, if you have some question, because I think, or if you want to try the simulator yourself, uh, we can start it here. Uh, yeah, I hope that I have some some new version because we have multiple versions here. Yes. So if you start the simulator, you can start it. Uh, okay. Okay, you can start it where is the chat, 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 chat more. The chat, yes. Okay, so there is the chat. I need to open some link. Okay, so, uh, so. So basically, you can see now our page, our web page. I put the link to the chat that you can start it yourself. Okay. And now you can try to run the simulator. So there is a link to the online version, or if you click to the uh, icon, then you can start the online version of the simulator. Okay, and we can start with the example. So if you press the button example, then we have there a simulator and a very simple code here, which uh, uh provides in the memory uh, the, the null terminated uh, text record hello world and it access the serial port status register in the loop to check if it is already if it, it is ready to accept the character and when it is ready to accept the character then it uh, writes the byte one byte from the 
hello world string to the serial port. Terminal, so we can compile the code. We see the CPU and we can step the, the code or we can run it at some speed, for example, 10 instruction per second and play. And we can test exactly the same if I switch here to a pipeline version, for example, with hazard unit. So we can start, uh, start uh, empty. It, it, there is uh, three buttons. Uh, uh, load machine means that we can provide a, a file uh, with elf file with actual executable. Then we can start the empty simulator, in which case we can write uh, directly the assembly code in uh, the editor and compile it uh, by this arrow down for the compilation. And then we can run it. And in this case, we have selected the pipeline version. So you can see that we have their interstage registers. And now if we start to simulate the code, we see how the data are propagated through the memory. And you can see here uh, how is uh, inserted. Okay, there is a knobs and flush of the pipeline after the branch. And now then in the load word case, there is load byte, load byte here. And because the next instruction is dependent on load byte, but load byte uh, doesn't not allow to forward from the output of the memory to the uh, input of the arithmetic logic unit because it has a too, uh, too long uh, path to propagate through all the logic. So in this case, we will see there the single stall. You see there is a stall which allows to uh, for uh, process the uh, load uh, byte instruction to the write back stage. And at this moment, the okay, th there is the it, its result is used uh, on the branch on equal to check if it is the last uh, byte of the string. And we see that at this moment, the forwarding is possible. There is switch this forwarding in the first uh, argument to the arithmetic logic unit. And this way we can see how a pipeline version works. For sure, we can select even the version without the hazard unit. And such version shows uh, a misbehavior because it cannot work. So you can select what you want. We have there even the operating system emulation. So we can select if we want to stop on the known and unknown uh, system calls. I select that I want to do not want to stop on known system calls and say that I want to start the empty. There under the file, there is a list of another examples. So there is a template for the operating system. And uh, the system call numbers which we use are equivalent to the Linux kernel ones. So uh, we have there this small subset of the system calls of the Linux kernel, which allows us, for example, to write Hello World program. And this Hello World program, when it is compiled into the L file, can be really run on the real, in this case, 32 bit Risk v hardware or on QMU user space emulation. Or it can be compiled here in the, in the simulator, or the ELF can be low to the simulator, and it can uh, work in the, in the simulator because system call is emulated as well. So if we go there, then we see that we set, oh, okay, and I select uh, for the start uh, non-pipeline version of the processor because it is easier for you to follow. So start empty. Uh, we have there the code. It set up uh, arguments. So A7 is set to the uh, 40 hexadecimal, which is a write system call. Uh, then there is a set the address and where we have the hello world string and number 
of bytes which should be written here to the A2. And we can select uh, in the view of the machine code if we want to see a mnemonic registers or if we want to see them uh, uh, marked by the numbers. So it is to help us to follow the code. So basically we see that now it is uh, the land set to setting bytes. And now we run a call and you can see that uh, hello world is already shown on the output. And then there is uh, uh, a call to finish the program system exit. So we can continue with this one. And uh, okay, in this case, uh, if we run it at full speed, it finish. At this moment, we can stop through the steps through this as well. So if I run it this way, that it finish the program as it finish on the uh, operating system. We can load uh, some more complex program. Uh, I will start the local copy of the simulator probably, but it works even in the web version. So it is the native application. I hope that you can see the stuff. Uh, and in this case, I can select there. No, 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 why? Yes, okay, it is, yeah, I have window here, yes. So for example, there is an example written in the C to show some text on the uh, graphical frame buffer. So I can try to start it, load machine. We have loads, uh, I can switch on the program or, or maybe we can look into the core. I can double click on the program. And when I step, we see that we are running uh, elf uh, binary. I can switch on LCD dis display here. Okay, it shows on my different display. So I need to move it. Yes, here. And we can run the code in the pipeline, on pipeline version and so on. Problem is that it is quite slow. Okay, even if we run it unlimited or at the maximum speed where not all uh, the states are shown when only snapshots uh, 10 times per second is shown on, on the uh, display. Uh, the state of the CPU is quite slow. So I can lower the number of the windows here and uh, switch off the visualization. So if I switch the core view, then it starts to run faster. But the speed is not uh, not the objective of the of this simulator for sure. Its main objective is oh. so you can see we have written some some text on the display. Okay, so it is uh, some short introduction from our side. Uh, you can, uh, if for the version of the core of its uh, pipeline and with caches, uh, oh, I need to switch on the, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, there is the question, so please, can you, can you talk, do you hear me, yes? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes, great. Okay. So thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, I have two questions. The first one is technical. Uh, do you plan to add also the uh, branch computation in the decode stage, which is uh, uh, the other Probably option? Probably not, because okay. uh, we have it in the MIPS version. If you use our MIPS version, it has a branch uh, uh, resolution in the decode stage, but uh, for complete RISC-V CPU, there is possible a branch on the uh, less or EQL and so on. Uh, so in this case, you have there a delay of whole propagation through the arithmetic logic unit. So in the real design, putting the resolution of the branches to the decode stage in the RISC-V is quite problematic. And on modern CPUs, it is usually resolved uh, by the adding a branch prediction. So our 
uh, idea is to add the branch prediction. And in this case, in the fact, uh, the overhead of the branches that they need to flush a three instruction is in the fact, uh, uh, okay, plus because uh, advantage, because it shows that without the branch prediction, uh, your execution is quite slow. So it, it, okay. it is longer longer term, but it is possible to add even the branch resolution to the uh, to the decode stage. As I have said, we initially have it for the MIPS version because in the MIPS book it is defined this way. Mm -hmm. uh, University of Athens, which use our MIPS uh, simulator, has extended to add there some options to select if the branches are executed in the, I think, decode, execute, mm -hmm. and even memory. Yeah. I'm not sure. At least in okay. two possible states. And they have added some uh, branch prediction visualization. So OK. OK. Yeah. So you plan to introduce branch prediction. Uh, yes. As far as I understand. OK. Yes. Some very simple, yeah. probably uh, um, uh, two bit uh, Smith predictor, probably only that. OK. Single bit and two bit uh, uh, Smith predictor, I think. But yes, okay. I, I, we are open to the ideas and we will be happy if we get some feedback and interest and so on. Some idea yeah. how other universities are teaching uh, computer architectures. So. Yeah, that, that's actually my, my second question. So um, how much did this uh, improve uh, your lectures? I mean, did it force you to rethink the way in which uh, theoretical, practical, and uh, even final tests are delivered? For example, do you do final tests by using the simulator? No, no, or no. Do you uh, use something have, like we, pen, no. pen and paper? No, no. Uh, for final test, we have uh, yet another option that we have a simulator written in the Python, which is uh, used only for very, very short uh, excerpts of the code. But it uh, allows to generate, uh, I'm not sure if you know, uh, auto multiple choice testing system. Uh, yeah, I heard about it, yeah. Mm. Yeah, OK. So basically, we are able to generate uh, uh, correct result and latex code uh, yeah. for uh, and even compute the stalls and so on, but only for the simple, uh, not for the complex yeah. code, only for the simple one. And uh, we we can offer, we have this MIPS version of this simulator is available on the web. Uh, Risk five is only in our test system, but we plan to put it to on the web as well. Okay. I can show it to you where it is. Uh, but it is. Yeah, this it, was it, just a was just a pedagogical question. It's yeah. Just okay. How much did it, did it change the way in which you do lectures and and tests in the end? So mm -hmm. if, um, on my side, my university, this kind of uh, course is pretty much very very old style, very old school. We didn't introduce any simulator or, or something else. So I was wondering how much using a simulator will change uh, the way in which we teach uh, a yeah. computer uh, architecture course. So that was yeah. my question, which is not technical if you want, but much more yeah. on the- uh, But uh, you, you know, can even teaching generate- Teaching side. Yeah, yeah. You can even generate the test from the simulator because a command line allows you to uh, write the output to trace information. So maybe it can be used even for this. But I have this, I, I try to find it. It is quite simple. And it, you know, it's not here. Where it is? I think that I have it on my GitHub account. But if somebody else has something okay. other to, to speak with, no, I, I do not see it. We have somewhere. Yeah, but we can maybe synchronize uh, later on. Yeah, a post This this is this okay. this is this is MIPS version. Okay. It is very simple code written in the Python. It is uh, generated by a hack that basically we use because I know uh, Benutils quite well and so on. So it generates the instruction, description, and arguments for the MIPS from the Benutils uh, description file. And uh, 
if you look into it, it is able to analyze the code, uh, find the need for the stores or for the forwarding. Mm -hmm. And then we have the another level. Okay, actual tests are not available from us. You know, it is uh, not that I do not want to share them with you, but I do not want to share them for full with our students. So <laughs> yeah, there is, yeah. but, but understand. basically the tool which is behind and if they want to build their own test, it is possible. And these tools can be provided by some sequence of the instruction. You see, there are the examples. Basically you put such sequence of the instruction to the tool mm -hmm. and it can uh, try to do the permutation as long as there is no change of the output. Okay. And then yeah, analyze it for the uh, for the stalls and so on. So basically, each mm -hmm. of our students has a different, or almost each one has different uh, uh, different task for the exam, and it is written on the paper. So basically, okay. they have. But yeah, l last question. Then I will leave. Uh, you know, um, the, the time to for other ones. Do you think that maybe having a simulator, an online simulator could uh, even change the way in which we uh, test, uh, you know, student knowledge? I mean, having an online simulator where they can, you know, somehow answers, answer to some, you know, uh, problems that have been set up into the simulator oh, oh, itself. Oh, 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 okay, we do it, as we use it such a way that for the students as the bonus task, uh, uh, okay. we provide them the option that they write to the, uh, to the Git repository. And if they mm -hmm. write to the correct, uh, uh, correct uh, paths, the task, then they commit to the Git repository, GitHub hook at our local university GitHub, yeah. takes uh, the task, send it for the evaluation. We evaluate it with uh, 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 command line version of the simulator, mm -hmm. then assess it that the result is correct mm -hmm. and how many cycles they need and how many stores and access to the memory and so on. And for example, okay. how many uh, cache miss misses are there and so on. And then we can even uh, build a ranking of the students and let them to compete who can write the code, which, uh, okay, uh, has a best utilization of the cache uh, with minimum amount of the memory accesses or can write the code which uh, takes yeah. a least number of cycles and so on. So okay. yes, it can be used for something, but for final exam, okay, we have some courses which has an implementation part, but in mm -hmm. our course, we have semestral work, we have some task with C to, uh, optimize the cache utilization, which we check by Valgrind and so on, on some bigger mm -hmm. task. Okay. Okay. But... Wait. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So if there is some another uh, question, idea. Yeah, very small one. Uh, very small okay. one. Um, do you hear me? Yeah, yes, great. Yep, good, thank you. So thanks for the story and really good tool. Uh, what type of the license do you provide it under? It is GPL3 at this moment. Okay, GPL3. And, uh, the and it, it probably needs to be GPL3. We can be even more open, but uh, if you want to use QT, then it is necessary to, okay, to be compliant with, oh, or it is best to basically be, be at the same level. So it is GPL3. Okay, thank you. And for the course uh, that you use it with, um, is it also reusable for the other universities? Do you offer that as well? Uh, you okay, that? we offer it even in the library office uh, source format. Uh, we, mm -hmm. from my point, okay, there is policy of the university and mine policy. My policy is that everything from me is open as long as, the, as there is a reference. Uh, okay. And generally, uh, even the most of the university of our faculty people agree with this. So if you have a question I can ask uh, our head, but basically our intention is to cooperate and to provide the best possible materials uh, to the- Yeah, yeah. It would be very good to share this 
with yeah, which, actually, our local universities and, and make them reuse, maybe enhance, uh, contribute and, and, back to you, maybe. Yeah, okay. We are considering even to start a new version of the slides on GitHub because uh, our slides are in the library phase. But if you go to Comparg, uh, our colleague from the other faculty which cooperates with us has started with the LaTeX version. So we have there the LaTeX version in, I think, Czech and in English. And it follows this simulator, but uh, it is uh, it is newer one. So, and it is uh, it is decided that it is uh, for a use. So, okay. So it is it is basically that task which I have shown in the short in my presentation. But you will find the full lectures. So this is the course of our colleague Michal Stepanovsky. He helped even with the visualization of CPU tuning and so on. Our basic course is here. You can find the lectures in Czech uh, and in English. And uh, if you go to the lectures, you can find the, their PDF, ODP, uh, and uh, the uh, recording on YouTube. Okay, I'm not native English speaker, so be prepared that my English is far from being perfect for sure. But yeah, I hope yeah, that you can understand it. <laughs> okay, so so it is, and we have there even the advanced architectures course. So if you go mm -hmm. to the advanced architectures, then you can find there even the video. Uh, but it is in okay, it is in Czech, I think. Yes, this one is in the Czech. But lectures are even in uh, no, 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 it is computer architectures. Excuse me. It is advanced computer architectures. And there is the course pages uh, about videos in this case are in Czech. And what mm -hmm. we have there, we have even implemented this CPU in the VHDL with my students. And uh, uh, one of them has run it even on FPGA. So we have the same model, which can be run in GHDL uh, to, to show the uh, performance of the CPU direct in the signals, or we can go to the to the um, okay real FPGA, and we are now trying to run it as the coprocessor side by side with ARM on Zinc. So basically, that the Zinc can be used to set up the uh, instruction and data memory and run the Risk Five CPU, uh, which is uh, okay cycle exact to to our presentation. Okay, so okay. it is what we have there. And uh, for the start of the course, there is a link to the templates. Again, we will be happy if somebody provides a feedback and so on. I try to make it a little bigger. I'm not sure how well you can see it. And in this repository, there are some, it, it, it is templates for the student work. And for QTR vSIM, you will find there, for example, very simple code with malloc, which can be linked against a new lib and run. So basically simple startup code and you can use it with our simulator. Or there is, uh, if you want to teach that start, you usually want to try it with something like adding uh, one to the vector and then show how you can help to this code with the cache. Then you can show that there is a cache collisions. If you, for example, add two vectors, if you do the adding of the two vectors, then you get to the problems with uh, directly mapped cache uh, and block size bigger than one and uh, some incorrect, oh, okay, unfortunate uh, placement of the data in the memory. You have worse, uh, uh, worse uh, uh, throughput than if you have only a uh, system without the cache. So on this, you can show that it is necessary to go to two-way two set associative, and then you can show that even that is not enough at the moment when you try to add three vectors, so you can go to, you need to go usually to four uh, very associative cache and so on. Right. So this is materials which allows you to start with uh, 
which is we have there the, even those pragmas uh, code can be compiled by the uh, GNU assembler, GNU assembler, but we use there the pragmas because this is allowed. And our pragma QT RV sim allows to command the internal assembler of the simulator, for example, to open some window or to focus a memory to a given location after the compilation and so on to help guide people to see uh, the correct uh, okay data and output of the of the simulator okay okay thank you very much and megan i, I assume that we'll be able to get the original pdf version of today's presentation right the PDF version, or I'll have yeah, the... just to have clickable links to every yeah, resource. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, Pavel, if you can yeah, send yeah, me the yeah, I will send it. Great, yeah, and I'll send it out, oh. and I'll include that in the recording that I send out to academic and training, and then also what I put on the private YouTube mm -hmm. channel. But yeah, I think it would be great for you to list as many of these um, open courses in the exchange, the link that I put in. Because uh, that's really where we're directing professors these days to go and find reusable materials yeah, and right. students that want to learn on their own. Yeah, okay. And within the presentation, don't forget your contacts so everyone interested would be able to ping and ask yeah, if necessary. Yeah, okay. Uh, we, are, we are now a member of Risk Five Foundation, so uh, I have uh, successfully finished the fight with, with the, okay. Um, uh, uh, basically the management and so on to go through so I am on the